Hey, what's going on guys? So there is a heated debate that's been going on all around my channel for the best part of a year now, and it's been kind of bugging me. It's basically a lot of people arguing and debating as to whether or not barreling a 3x3, or indeed any cubic puzzle for that matter, on all three of its axes will give you a sphere as the final product. Now I know this not to be true, but it's been kind of difficult trying to convince people otherwise. So I've just decided that I'm going to make the puzzle in this video, and hopefully this will end the debates once and for all. And also, I'm not entirely certain of what the puzzle is going to look like. I just know it won't be a sphere, so hopefully we're going to find out. So let's get started. Now, as I'm sure you're used to by now, I was starting this puzzle off with a regular old 3x3, the particular model of which is a chi sail. I've been asked that uh, a lot, so uh, I'm using a chi sail for this build, and I started by taking all the center caps off and then tightening up the puzzle so that it wouldn't turn while I was cutting it on the bandsaw. After I had done this, I just had a quick look over the puzzle to make sure that everything was aligned before I took it over to my bandsaw. I tilted the table on my bandsaw to 45 degrees. The way I was going to cut this puzzle is almost identical to an octagonal barrel. I was just going to do that on every single edge rather than just four. In my previous video where I built a double cylinder puzzle, this is where I stopped. But as you can see, there are four more edges, so I was going to cut those off as well. Cutting all of the edges off the puzzle like this is a very similar starting point to a rhombic cube octahedron and a rhombic dodecahedron. If you've seen my rhombic dodecahedron video, you'll know that both of the puzzles that you see here are made using the exact same puzzle with the exact same starting method. I was going to fill the puzzle up with epoxy sculpt, and I wasn't going to bother disassembling it, so I did all of that off camera and I just stuffed epoxy sculpt into all of the pieces. You don't really have to disassemble the puzzle, as it has to be completely solid for you to do this build. And now it was time to turn the puzzle into a cylinder on one of its axes. I held the puzzle loosely between my fingers and I held it at a slight angle to the travel of the belt, and I slowly grinded it into a perfect cylinder. And as you can see, this method does give you a pretty perfect cylinder. If you were making a 3x3 barrel, this is where you'd stop and disassemble the puzzle, round off all the pieces, and continue on with the build in that method. But as I was going to make basically three barrels, I removed two of the rounded off center caps and I replaced two of the center caps on the flat faces. The reason I was doing this is so that I had somewhere to put my fingers while holding the puzzle and spin it on the belt sander, and I also had the center caps get the same treatment as the rest of the puzzle. That way I didn't have to round them off later on. After I had done that, I took the puzzle back over to my belt sander and I began rounding it off on another axis. Now as you can see here, it's kind of hard to get the puzzle started on the belt sander, so I'm going to let you in on a little trick that I use. Before starting on the belt sander, I like to rotate all of the layers of the puzzle to make sure that it's a lot easier to start the puzzle off. And as you can see here, it's turning just fine. After I had finished rounding off the puzzle on all three of its axes, you can see here that it still obeys the basic properties of a barrel, which is that it rolls. Uh, but it rolls on all of its axes rather than just one or two. So it's really cool to see this puzzle doing that. So now it was time to disassemble the puzzle and round off all of the edges of each of the pieces individually. Now that the puzzle was all disassembled, it was time to do what is basically the easiest part of this modification, at least I think that is. I like to round off all of the pieces of the puzzle by using a nail file and knocking off all of the sharp edges. There's no real right or wrong way to do this, it's pretty much what works the best for you. After I had rounded off all the pieces, I began to reassemble the puzzle and I was pretty surprised at how this puzzle looked. I was expecting something entirely different, in fact I had really no idea what rounding a puzzle off on all three of its axes was going to look like. And now that the puzzle was fully reassembled, I can appreciate it in its full glory. You can see here that it still functions like a regular 3x3, but now it rolls on all three of its axes, which I think is a pretty interesting feature of this puzzle. 
Rather than paint the puzzle, I sprayed it with WD-40, which darkens all of the epoxy sculpt and basically makes it look almost identical to painting. Current Puzzles did this for his 6x8x10, and uh, I've actually been doing this for a long time as well. I use it to darken all the interior parts of the puzzle, because of course I spray paint it while it's assembled. Since this puzzle has basically the same faces as a rhombic dodecahedron, just pillowed rather than flat, I'm going to sticker it up in a similar color scheme, but I'm going to get the stickers made by Oliver, that way if you guys follow along with this video, you guys can build this puzzle for yourself. But anyways, I hope you guys like this puzzle, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.